Now this is the first video of five or six short videos related to our chapter one project where you're going to learn how to do data analysis and writing of statistics using Google Sheets and Google Forms. Now this particular video addresses step one, which is just the first item here, talking about how to use Google Forms and Google Sheets to get our data that we need and how to start our analysis. The second step is covered in the next video, and that's going to talk about the generating of statistics using Google Sheets. Our third video is going to talk about making box plots and getting the five number summaries that we need. The fourth video is going to talk about making histograms. In the fifth and sixth videos, talk about how do you really write about statistics and how do you properly compare statistics from two different data sets and sound smart and mathematical about it. So to kick off our project, here's what you need to do. You're going to want to think of a question that you want to ask all of the students in your particular class. The response they have to give you needs to be something numerical in value, something quantitative. So your first mission is going to come up, what are you curious about with respect to your students? Maybe you're curious about how many other siblings they have in their household. If that's the case, then your question might be, um, how many siblings are there, including yourself, in your household? We can get that data from a Google form uh, through a survey that we're going to create as a class, and then we can use Google Sheets to generate our statistics, get all the graphs, and then ultimately you can write a report to compare what you found about boys versus girls, which is going to be your ultimate goal related to your primary question. So let's talk about the first step, which involves the Google Forms. You're going to want to go into Schoology and find the Chapter 1 Project folder. In there, find the appropriate uh, hour collection data link. If you're first hour data collection, this is yours, or find third hour, sixth hour, eighth hour. Click on this appropriate Google link. It's going to keep you within Schoology, but we want to get outside of Schoology and actually bring this form into the Google Forms itself. So either just double click on the link here or hit the export out button. That's then going to free us out of Schoology and give you into this form. Now everyone in the particular class, and this is first hours class, has edit rights to this form. So please be very thoughtful and only change and take charge of one question. You're going to want to go and edit the form, so click on the uh, pencil in the upper right hand corner. Now there are two fields on this form I do not want you to touch. Uh, the first one here is what is your gender, and the second is what is your grade. Following these two questions is where you're going to add your each individual one question, which again will give a quantitative answer from the various students. So you want to think about what that question should be. I will also have a few other questions in there uh, for data collecting that I might use or we could use for any students that are possibly absent. Let's take a look at some good examples of quantitative-based questions you could ask. This is what last year's form looked like. Um, you're going to see a question that each student wanted to ask the other students. And what we're trying to do, folks, is to create one cumulative uh, survey in a Google form versus having 30 different surveys out there with questions. So we're collaborating together so every student takes one survey versus 30 surveys. Here's an example from Megan from last year. The question she wanted to know was this. How many times do you eat dinner with your family per week? Now when you create this question, you get to choose your own question type. Most people choose the short answer text and just have each student type it in. If you want to take a little more control, you can actually do uh, this, this box type where you can click on the button, you could do a checkbox, you could have different uh, drop down choices. Uh, now for Megan's choice, how many uh, days do you eat with your family per week? The only thing I would say on here, there could probably be another option of zero. What if you never do? So if you do give them a standard list of options to choose from, make sure every possible option you think someone could choose would be there. Otherwise, just choose the short answer text. Now this is probably the trickiest part to get started with because you have to come up with a question that you are curious about in relation to your uh, peer students in your classroom that will give you a quantitative answer. For example, what is not quantitative? What you could not ask them is something like this. What color is your hair? Check either brown, blonde, etc. That is a qualitative word. It's called categorical. We need to be able to get numerical responses from students so we can compute averages. Let me show you another one. This question from Dylan. How many times do you study on average per day? And he wants it in minutes. 
You need to be very specific and ask how you want the answer to, to come back. Minutes, hours. If you don't tell people, you're going to get a variety of answers and you're going to have bad data. So be very specific on this. Now, another thing maybe Dylan could have added would be on an average school day. Uh, clearly, in the summer, you probably don't study, but you never know. There could be somebody taking that into account. Or do you want to say not on the weekends? Or do you want to include the weekends? Um, just be specific so you know that they are typing and everyone is giving you the same reasonable answers. So your first goal is to come in to school with your idea of what your question is going to be. You're going to go into this form once you, ha you hit the edit mode and you're going to type in your specific question. Please put your name first to start it off with because we ultimately need to collect this data and I want you to remember which question was yours and I want to be able to see what question is yours in case I have any questions for you on that. Now once all the questions are in there, we will take the survey as a class and gather the responses. If you've never worked with Google Forms before, uh, this is where we were in the questions. When you can go back into the form and click on the responses. This is our data from last year. You're going to notice it says 28 students responded. You can go down and scroll through and see what the response was to your question. It's not bad information, but it's not a lot of information. Um, because what we're going to do for this project is dive deeper into your one question. We're going to analyze your question by gender. We're going to analyze it by grade. And we're going to analyze it by zip code. So let me show you how can we actually analyze the data in more detail because all we're getting from the form is this high level information. What you're going to want to do is go into the form and click right here. This is an export to Google Sheets button. So please click on export to Google Sheets. When you do, it's going to bring you to this particular form. Now, before you do anything to this form, what you're going to want to do is make your own individual copy. To do that, just go over to File and go down to Make a Copy. Now, we are going to have to find this file later, so I recommend using a nice naming convention. I would use this. I would put FST, Chapter 1, Project Data, then put a dash and put your full name on there so you'll know where it is. Decide where you want to put it. I have a chapter one folder for FST in my Google Drive. That's where I want to save it. Hit OK and please save that document. Now make sure you're working in your own document. So notice the title of mine is up here. It says the one with Miss Landon. Get out of the old one. That original one is for every student to have to access. We do not want to modify that data. We want to keep that real and complete. This file is my file though and I can change it. So let's work on cleaning up the data file. Now what I want to do is make sure I do keep the gender, the grade, and the zip code because I need that data. But let's say that I have my data in column I. I'm Austin. This is my question. Those are my responses. I want to delete all of these columns and all of these others. So there's two ways you could go about doing that. Um, if you go here, highlight a column E to H because again I want to keep I. You can either go to the drop down edit and I will tell you, it doesn't work to necessarily delete, delete these. It might, you can try it. I had some issues, so instead of de deleting, what I had to choose to do was to actually hide them. So if you can delete, again, just highlight these three columns, go to edit, and click or highlight the delete columns E through H. If that doesn't work for you, let's hide them. Another way you can do it is once you've highlighted all the columns, just go to the drop down arrow and on here you could delete columns E through H and it will clear out those columns for us. And you can do the same thing. You're going to just highlight those columns and on the little uh, box here, there's a drop down box on any one of the columns, click that. Again, if deleting worked, we could have just, I uh, did delete column E through H. If it doesn't, you can actually hide the columns. So select hide and they will disappear. So after doing that, there's the column I want if I'm Austin, but I still have a lot more other questions here from other students. So do the same thing. Highlight the next column all the way over to the right. Keep scrolling to the right. There's a lot of other questions over here. Get rid of all of that data and hit uh, the delete on that. You're going to notice my column I is there and it jumps from D to I. They're still in there, but we just can't see them. Now there's going to be lots of other columns and questions to your right. So highlight the next one to yours and scroll all the way over to the right. Keep going until you get rid of every single one and do the same thing. Either you can do the drop down and delete it if it allows you. If it doesn't allow you, then just do hide the columns. 
So now we're left with a really nice, smaller looking file. This is very specific to my question, except you want to look at the data. Look at your question. Did any students give you data that is typed in odd or looks strange? In this case, I do have two issues. I had people actually put the label hours. 14 hours in a Google Sheet is not a number. It's a text field because the word is there for hours. So I need to manually go in here and just type 14. And into here, just type 7. So you're going to notice I did that and it looks good. But scroll all the way down. Look at all of your data. Does anything look weird or strange? If so, this is the time to try to figure out who that student was and ask a clarifying question. Should you change the data? Now on the worksheet that I gave you, I do want you to write down some totals right now. So what you're going to do is let's practice sorting within Google Sheets. All you have to do to sort, it's very easy. I want to sort by gender first because I want to get some totals by gender. So uh, highlight column B, which is gender, and go to the little arrow. And what you do is you select sort sheet A to Z. That'll sort it alphabetically so females will show up and then the males. So click that and we'll get the file here to be sorted for us by female. Now on your sheet, I'm going to ask you for give me the total of the female column, the average, the min, the max, and the count. So what you want to do is go to your particular data field and highlight all the way down for just the females. Go to this lower right hand corner where it says sum and click on that sum button. It's going to give you all of this data. Record this on your worksheet please. So the total of all the females for this question was how many hours of physical activity do you do a week? Of all the ladies in class, it would be 90 hours. Uh, here's the average, here's the min, the max, and the count means there were 11 ladies that were asked. After that, go ahead for the males, scroll down to the numerical field for that, highlight all the males, click again on the sum and record your uh, various uh, totals and sums for that please. Now let's continue on and let's get our sums by grade. So we need to go to the grade column. If you highlight that, click the arrow, you can hit the sort sheet. And it's gonna sort our data for us by grade, which is great, all of my 10th graders here, then my 11th graders and so forth. Let's get all of those statistics about them too. So let's start with just the 10th graders. If you highlight the quantitative field, it's gonna, and then click on the sum here. Um, I, the total hours of 10th graders is 34. Here's my average, my min, my max, and there were a total of four people who responded to that one. Do that for all of the grades that show up for your survey question and record the results. Now I also want to show you what if you want to sort your data by more than one column. So for instance, what if we wanted to sort it by gender and by grade? Or maybe we want to sort it by gender and then have the hours go in increasing order from smallest to largest. How could you go about doing that? Easiest way is to do this. First click on kind of the central box right here and it will actually highlight all of the data for you. Next, you're going to, going to want to go up to the menu bar to data, and when you click on that, notice a few things first. Uh, these first four uh, kind of options are going to either be to sort the sheet by the column from A to Z, so smallest to largest, or Z to A, um, or use the sort range by this. Um, these are pretty similar for our purposes, but notice because all the data here is highlighted, it defaults to column A. If you wanted another way to just sort one single column, let's say I wanted to sort column B, just go in and highlight column B and then do data, and this would default to column B. So you can access sorting that way versus just going into the column itself. But remember, the reason we're here is we want to sort our data by two columns. Let's do by gender and by the total hours. So if I highlight the whole sheet like I did, this time we want to click on sort range. Now after clicking, you're going to get this option here. Uh, this box is normally not checked, the default is unchecking, but it says here the data has a header row, and ours does, so I'm going to click that so it doesn't sort the header row, it keeps it there. And it's only going to give you one option at first. So I'm going to choose gender, and I want it to go A to Z, so that would be female to male. If you want male to female, do Z to A, because it's alphabetical. Then I'm going to click add another sort column. So you click that and another option comes up. So it's first going to sort by this and then it's going to sort by whatever drop down I pick. And I want it to do hours and I want to go from smallest to largest in terms of the count. So click that. 
and all you need to do is click sort and what you're going to notice for the data is the gender is sorted and by each of the two genders first for the females we're going to see smallest to largest and then for the males smallest to largest you can use that sorting tool to sort by uh, one column, two columns, or more than two columns if you want. It's just another option. So this now wraps up our video on how to manipulate a few things within Google Sheets that may be helpful for your project.